Okay, so it's a Tuesday morning. It's Plus Sports and Plus TV Africa. My name is Wally Scott. Welcome on the show. Before I go to my other two stories, something I want to try and intimate you on this morning. Did you know that Nigeria had a functional cricket league? Most Nigerians don't know that. What I mean functional? Functional league. They have a log. They have winners of the league. The day they get league champions as in a regular cricket league. Most Nigerians don't know that. So we'll discuss the Nigerian Cricket League today, pre and post pandemic, and how far they've gone in the past and how the pandemic has affected it and other things, of course. Before I go to that, head coach Super Eagles Get Up Roar has confirmed Hamed Musa will not feature in either of their final African Cup of Nations qualifying matches against the Benin Republic and Lesotho. Musa is still clubless after leaving Saudi Professional League Club Al Nasir in October 2020. The winger has not played a competitive match since he featured in Nigeria's fall draw against Sierra Leone on November 13th. Musa's latest invitation to the squad raised eyebrow, but Raw has explained he's in camp to train and keep his fitness level. He calls himself Blue Blood. Some call him King. Slatan Ibrahimovic has returned to Sweden's national team older, wiser, and more mature, and even shed a tear as he recounted how his son didn't want his famous father to leave Milan to join up with Jane Anderson's squad. 39-year-old who quit international football after Euro 2016 choked up when he asked what his son's 14-year-old Maximilian and 12-year-old Vincent thought of his decision to answer his country's call one more time. To play in the national team is the biggest thing you can, you can do as a football player. And uh, as I was following them, inside me I was feeling I think I can help them, I think I can do something, but obviously it's not up to me. What the player wants and what a coach wants, it has to go it has to, to go together, not one and the other one no. Obviously as a football player you wanna be on the field and help every moment you, you see teams that you, you played for and that you played with, teammates that you played with. And uh, but I didn't say to myself because I, I had a bad injury. I had a very bad injury. So my thoughts at the moment when I was injured was not like, I mean, in my head, I'm the best, but physically I was not the best. So I just enjoyed and uh, follow, follow the, the success. And today I'm here because I think I can help. And, uh, and, uh, and this is my wish. And uh, from back home, I missed I miss the national team because if I don't miss it, it means it didn't mean nothing to me. But I get the opportunity now to play for my for my country, and uh, and I do it with honor. And uh, but it's not only about that. I'm come. It it sounds like I'm only happy to be here. I'm happy if I can bring results because I'm here to get results and and bring results for for the coach and my teammates and and, and the whole country. So as much as I talk here, if I don't bring results, it doesn't mean nothing. Kings Latin. Amnesty International has written to FIFA President Gianni Infantino asking soccer's governing body to do more to protect migrant workers in Qatar, many of whom are engaged in World Cup infrastructure projects. The host of the tournament, which will be held, played in November and December 2022, has already shown a spotlight on the often poor conditions construction workers are claimed to toil under in the Middle East. Hundreds of thousands of workers from South Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa are employed on building sites across the region, and charities such as Amnesty say they are often exploited. Ahead of qualification matches for the Qatar 2022, Amnesty has called on FIFA to live up to its responsibilities, prevent human rights violations connected to the tournament, and to use the full extent of its influence to urge Qatar to fulfill its program of labor reforms before the World Cup kicks off. We, we sent a letter to, to, to um, Infantino. Um, we've not had a response yet, and we've we've engaged with FIFA um, very often over the over the years. We know that they're committed to um, uh, to try to 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 ensure that the World Cup does leave a positive legacy. Um, we want them to do much more. Uh, we want them to make sure that they're much more hands-on in the. Um, in the, in the delivery of the tournament to make sure the workers' rights on stadiums and, and other projects in the country are, are respected. Uh, we want them to have a much stronger voice towards the Qatari government to make sure that they're speaking out, to make sure that Qatar fulfills its commitments towards its workers. And we want to, um, to make sure that human rights are embedded in future tournaments as well, to make sure we don't see the repeat of, of what we've seen and, and, and the 
the, the different controversy, controversies and scandals over the last decade. So we look forward to a response. Uh, we look forward to a dialogue. And we hope that FIFA can do a lot more. Uh, and it, it must do a lot more. Now, eight teams will compete for Hannas at the National Cricket Men's Championship scheduled for Edo Boys High School Cricket High Performance Center, Benin City, Edo State, from Monday today to March 31st. Speaking on the event, Yahaya Okwenia, President of Nigeria Cricket Federation, said the championship is the first on the list of activities that will form the molding of a stronger national team, both for the under-19 and, more importantly, the senior men's team. Nigeria would host two of the World Cup qualifiers in October and November, and Okwenia believes the championship will serve as a preparatory event for the challenges ahead. Lagos, Edo, Anambra, and Kwara are drawn in Pool A, while Pool B has Kaduna, Rivers, Delta, and Oyo slugging it out. Endurance Offham, players' representative on the NSCF board, who also doubles as a tournament coordinator, said the event will be the first test for any player willing to pick a shirt in the national team later in the year. National coach Sri Lankan Asanka Guru Sinha will be on hand with his Nigerian assistants to watch the event to assess the players' performances. Now joining us, his name is Andrew Ororo. He's the skipper Federal Government College Worry Old Students Cricket Association. And of course, joining us too is cricket analyst and commentator, the go-to guy. When it comes to cricket in the media, his name is Shun Ajidagba. Good morning, Andrew Ororo. Good morning. Good to have you on the show, sir. Thank you, Mr. Bradley. And good morning, Shion Wajidagba, the go-to guy when it comes to cricket in the media. You give God the glory. Good morning, Wajidagba. Let me start with you, Andrew. You are a player in the league. Shion is a journalist, so I'll come to him from an outsider's perspective. Now, how has it been, first of all, pre-pandemic? When it started, how far have you guys gone in the league? Now, how has it been, first of all, pre-pandemic? Well, um... You know, there are two divisions in the CCC League in Lagos. Division 1 and Division 2. Now, the games for Division 2 were finished, basically before the pandemic started. While I think the games for Division 1 could not really come to a conclusion. But, you know, there are rules in cricket. You know, when games cannot be played, you have the way points are allotted that are the share points or depending on weather conditions or depending on the rules guiding the competition, basically. So Division 2 was finished. Teams were promoted. And at the end of the day, two, Division 1 was completed. And teams were relegated. Two teams to Division 1 and two teams from Division 1 down to Division 2, like it's done in any league in the world. So that's what happened before the... Let me ask a question now before I go to Shema Jidagba. Now, Andrew, we know for one that the club you play for is um, actually an old student association, you know, FGC Worry, you know. And um, how has the club continued to continually survive in a functioning league that goes in week to week, week, week in, week out, you guys play matches, you guys get relegated and come up on to... How do you guys survive financially and all that, that is? Top call. And... Um... It's a passion where everyone's hands are on deck. Basically, you know, the name says Federal Government College Worry Old Students Association. So it's painstaking reaching out to everyone in the association, looking for corporate sponsors where necessary, reaching out to old students, reaching out to friends, reaching out to those that love the game. You know, so there's a think tank, there's a management in place. There's a good structure which we've tried, you know, we were in Division 2 for a long time, up to 1998. And then we came on to Division 1. You know, we've been, we've been in Division 1 for a, for a long chunk. So it's, it's a lot of work. A lot, if you look at the shirt I'm wearing, you know, it might not be very clear, but you see there's a, there's a design union on the shirt. It's one of the old students that really be very beneficial to the club. And then you talk of so many other people. Talk about the vice president of the Nigeria Cricket Federation, who is the president of the cricket club. Talk about the former governor of the state, Aki Ambody, who, who was a cricketer as well, who played for the club. And so many others. You talk of uh, all the players. Talk of Rola Dulube, former, my former captain, Dozio Kolo, Uto Bimi, Andro Gomi, Siwa Jeba, so many of them. Okonu Pong, sorry, Okon Yanam, 
late Abba Tukuma Abba. Okay, um, so many names, you um, know, um, um, so many I can't um, mention let's, let's my head now. Let's slow down on the, on the club for saying that. So many. So Majid Agba, you are a journalist, so I see you from the eyes from outside, from outside the house. You see outside without bias. How would you assess the league pre and post pandemic, our cricket league so far? Well, unfortunately, the global pandemic did not allow the series to come to us. We would have loved to see teams play out and then get into the Super Bowl before we get into the big finals. But unfortunately, the pandemic did not allow us to complete the league. And like um, Aeroid, uh, teams get relegated and teams get promoted. Um, Division 2, they had uh, the luxury of uh, finishing their own games because they had uh, um, more grounds to play. But for Division 1, you have to play in the standard place, and the standard place to play in the Safar Balewa Cricket over that uh, amounted for uh, the accumulated games that we had for the pandemic. We never had the same game, but it actually happened, and so that's all it is. Okay. Um, Jeho, now if you were to say, okay, yeah. good, things can get better in cricket, what are the things you identify and what solutions do you prefer in this coming season? So, let me be frank with you. You know, I, I always like to be objective. We are not running a professional league in Nigerian cricket. Uh, that's the honest truth. Uh, those who play professional cricket overseas that we know, all they do, and even we are to it, they sleep, they think cricket. They don't think about any other things. But most of these guys that play in the club cricket committee league in Nigeria cannot do such. They have quite a number of things that they think of, from finance to schooling to money to every other thing. And so you expect a batsman who is playing for Federal Government College, Wally Old Boys Cricket Club, to go into the batting crease, play out innings, or bowl, or get wicked while he's thinking about his school, while he's thinking about his house rent, while he's thinking about this or that. He can't be concentrated. And then the pay stage must be improved upon. And I mean, most clubs run on what we call a contract basis, where they say they are engaging a player on a contract, which for me is good. But it must be improved upon. And Aeroy that he spoke to has done considerably well in ensuring that he helped some of these boys. It is kumbaton. It is quite so much for him to say we are running a club. Because I always tell you, Wale, that there are two types of people in life, the service-oriented and the profit-oriented. The service-oriented is the government. All they want to do is for returns. But the profit-oriented are business people who want to put in 10 naira and then get in 1,000 naira. In order that you see, when he commits his personal funds, he rallies some FDC or old boys to say support this club. The question is, what do they get in return, even if they win the league? So it's more like charity. And it's sometimes very painstaking on these people. Okay. I don't envy them at all. Okay, so because they commit their personal funds in running this thing. Okay, so so it's I, high time we do better than what we are yes, doing. Go down, so, Andrew, so that it covers for all those things. Andrew, let me come to you on this one. Shemu is, I'm sure you know him. He says, he praises you. He says you have done so much for the club. But he feels the, the league is not run professionally yet. He says they are bankers. There are lawyers, there are other professionals in the league who actually just come to play. So there's no 100% belief. While they are playing, they're thinking of their bank jobs, their children's school fees. So there's no 100% in the league yet. And that now they depend on charity. He praises you, Andrew. He says you have done so well. You have done everything for the club and all that. But however, he says the, the league still needs a 100% to make it work to the optimal. Thank you, Mr. Scott, and thank you, Shima Dejiba. Well, um, I believe there should be some synergy between the sporting administration in the country and so many other. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Mr. Go on. Wally Scott. I can hear you. Go on. Good. I believe there should be some synergy between the sports association in the country. It's very key. I I, I, I learned this game from when I was very young. And I was encouraged to play this game in the FGC Warrior, first of all. We must go back to the roots where we mature the youths and empower them 
this is my own structure, empower them. You know, abroad, when you want to play football, basketball, you have some scholarship schemes coming in from the states and even from schools while taking those sports. These are the things that should be imbibed into our culture. Cricket is a fantastic game. It's a gentleman's game. It builds you up. It's not just a game. It's not just like, like every other game. It builds you up for the future. So the government, whatever, corporate organizations, enthusiasts, sponsors, and those that love and can die for the game have to come and sit down. There should be, there should be a think tank, basically maybe a, a round table discussion where social and so amount will be voted for scholarship for students who are young, who are in school, but want to take this game up to the next level. These are my own thoughts. You know, she, she, she won't broke it all. She won't explain everything. It's difficult to keep the game alive, especially from private sponsorship, personal sponsorship. I mean, even the Nigerian Cricket Foundation, there's a brain behind it, Mr. Uya Kwata. Without him, I think the, the whole country will... Nigerian Cricket Foundation will not be functioning. I say that without any bias, not because he's my friend or because I know him, but because the passion he shares. Yes, you know, look at him. There's a festival going on. He's gone ahead to do a men's championship before the festival. Just like, you know, where you have like a warm-up game yeah. or you have warm-up games before competitions. Well, it's a big, it's a, it's a big task ahead. I know. Now, luckily, Uyi Andrew... can do it all. Luckily, Uyi Andrew... can do it all. Luckily, Andrew, I might be having Uya Pata on the show on Saturday. I hope so. Um, I hope he has promised me he'll be here on Saturday. So, of course, I'll, I'll try and make sure he comes here. And um, she won't be here on Saturday to, to actually work on that. However, there's going to be a cricket competition coming up today. Starts today in Benin City. And we hear that um, the president of Nigeria Cricket Federation is there. He says most of the future national team members in Nigerian cricket team will be picked from this competition. It ends on the 31st. How much of you, all you cricket guys, do you know about this competition? And how well do you agree with that, that most of the future national team members will come from this competition? It starts today in Benin City. Um, you know, I said something. It's a men's championship preluding the National Sports Festival. Yeah. And it has never happened in the history of this country before. Normally, when we go for the first festival, we just go. So maybe this championship is acting like a warm-up game to the sports festival. I will say kudos to the Nigerian Cricket Federation for thinking this out. You know, and then most of these players are hungry. You know, there's a league in place. Young players fall out from the leagues on the 17, on the 19. It's an opportunity for people to express themselves in the main chance because not everybody might have the opportunity to play at the sports festival. So it's a very, it's a very, very welcome development. And I, and, and I repeatedly continue to say kudos to Professor Kwaya and Mr. Uya Pata. Now, um, so the Bra. face of Nigeria cricket. So um, Andrew has nothing but praise for P Professor and um, um, Uya Pata, um, who I told you might be here on Saturday. Um, we have nothing but praise for them. I say they are doing very, very well. Now, this is a prelude to the sports festival. Is this what Nigeria should be doing before now for cricket? Now we will have a standard team by the time we we'll go for the sports festival soon. Well, it's owing to the pandemic that ravaged the whole world in year 2020, and they have not seen most of the games. So it's a fear that they have more like um, a test run before the National Sports Festival. And it's also fitting to know that the ground they will be using for the National Sports Festival is where they are going to play this uh, men's championship. Um, the coach, like you rightly said, uh, Desha Bandu, Afanka Pradi, Guru Sinha, yeah. will be seeing the guys at the first hand. So he will be able to assess guys that will be representing the national team. It's not fit yet that Nigeria has a cricket national team. So there are still places up for grabs as we prepare for a competition coming up uh, in September. So the guys need to work their socks up. And with this, uh, the league can also commence. But I, I think credit must go to Mr. Uyi Akwata, the vice president of uh, Nigeria Care Federation and the chairman of Edo State Cricket Association. He's done a lot for umpires and uh, for players in Edo State. There was a time he took them to Kenya, both male and female, and that reflected in their performance when they hosted the, the Under-17 Championship for male and female, which they both won. 
Then, of course, the president is also very passionate, Professor Yaya Ukrainian. But I think more can still be done. And like uh, Mr. Eroy said, if we have people investing heavily in cricket, then, of course, these people who run the club, who we call club owners, can have a sigh of relief. Because, like I said, players must be able to bat through the innings without thinking of any other thing, without getting distracted. Okay, Andrew, Andrew, let me come to you now. Now, I'm supposed to say this. I'm saying this seriously. I'm not joking, no. But it will sound like a joke. Love it or leave it. Um, I, I, I don't know why I want to laugh. Love it or leave it. Um, Nigerians are beginning to get bored of football. Love it or leave it. They are getting bored of football. Football has broken too many hearts. So they are going towards basketball these days. You know, and they are making us happy. They are number one in Africa, the Tigers. Number one in Africa, the Tigress. And they are making us... So nobody wants to get high blood pressure now. We've left football alone. We've gone to basketball. What can we do to bring cricket to their doorsteps too? How do you lure them from basketball to cricket now? You can do it. It can be done. It's doable. You must catch them young. You know, Shego, Shego and Jidagba have done so well. I, I, he's always in all our programs. I respect him a lot in the circle. We must go back to youths. Use all these, all these three senatorial districts. The white man had maybe the unity schools, about 104 unity schools. Cricket was a, was, was a, was a curriculum. You needed to pass. While you went to have this worry, you needed to pass cricket in your PE for you to go to the next class. You know? So we need to go back to the youths. Have academies. Build them up. Not, not bringing them up later on. Five, six. My kids, my kids are spinning now. They're looking at spinners, take, taking cues from them, my two boys. You know, Lagos State, all the rich states and all the states in the country, they need to take cricket back to the schools as a sport. Not just as a sport, as a branding sport. Now, you know, and then everybody, Shemundi, everybody, everybody Shemundi, will keen. I Shemundi, take, take, because Shemundi, you see, I agree there's with a word Andrew I use, on that one. Scott. Sorry, when it says, let me take, give you a quick one. Okay, okay. Quickly. Cricket is a way of life. Mm. Cricket is a way of life. That should sink into our minds. It's a gentleman's game. It's a way of life. The tenets of cricket builds you up and you will never forget what it teaches you to the rest of your life. Okay, now, Shil, quickly, um, I asked Andrew a question. His, his, his solution is that let's take cricket back to schools. Let's start catch them young. Now, I want to say that, um, love it or leave it, it's not a joke. It sounds like a joke, though. Nigerians are getting bored of football. It's giving us too much heartbreak. We are now going towards basketball. How can we bring cricket to their doorsteps? How can we lure them towards cricket? Aaron has said it all. See, in every country, they have a peculiar sport that they love so much. In America, you mention sports like basketball, ice hockey, American football. Football does not even come one to six in America. Every country has a peculiar sport that they talk about. But in Nigeria, everything is tilted towards football. And other sports should go and die. Look at your coach, General. Invite him Ahmed Musa to say, come in there to come and collect money. Let me use that local palace. Somebody that doesn't have any club. He's just coming there to come. We went back to school. The grassroots. I always tell you about England. There's a place called Crystal Palace. The horse park. They call that place eight years to podium. That means they will train you for eight years and you will be on the podium of the Olympics. That's what they call futuristic thinking. The future is the grassroots. Go back to schools and invest heavily and you'll get the dividend. It's as simple as that. Not every time you commit all our money to football. Yes, we know to football is the king of sports. In concept, hey, don't jettison other sports. When we go for Olympics, it's just one goal if you win for football. The greatest Olympian is Michael Phelps. Nigeria can never win the Olympics Michael Phelps won. He started the Olympics at age 16. Invest heavily in other sports and you get the dividend. He rubs off. You only know much. You don't... Okay, show, uh, before we go on the show, Andrew, I'll ask you this question now. It's believed by some people that um, cricket is supposed to be an elite sport. Unlike football, 22 men on the field of play chasing one ball. Basketball, say 14 men or, or 12 men chasing one ball. But cricket, you have to buy your bats, you have to buy your balls, you have to buy all your guards. It's believed to be a rich man's sport. That's what people used to think. That's what I, I, I used to even think about golf. But you see, when you're passionate about your sport, 
it becomes nothing to you. Let me give you an example. In clubs, you have what you call kick bags. And then for every so warrior, for example, if you play 100 runs, you get a bat. This is how I grew up. So imagine if you have 14 players in the side and throughout the season, 14 of them at every point in time play the century. That means they get a bat. For example, these are the basic things you need. A bat, a helmet. Okay, Andrew. These Andrew. are simple things that you can even get. You can get them from donation from, from even teams abroad in South Africa. I've done it before. I've done it before. I've gotten donations from England, shipped all of them down to Nigeria. Then I, I formed Worry Cricket Club. Then I was in Worry before I moved to Lagos. I would give equipment to everybody in Worry. Even the national team at that time, I gave them after reader balls, plastic balls. So you wouldn't, even, even international communities or, or countries, they want to help you. Kit bags, these are not, they're not, they're not, they're not, they're not, they're not, um, Expensive thing. Okay, Andrew. Andrew, I want to thank you very much for coming on the show. I wish I had more time, but hopefully you'll be here on Saturday with the Vice President Uyi Akbata on the show on Saturday. It's called Plus Sports Special. I'll have Shemajid Akbatu on the show too. I will try and analyze cricket extensively, find a final solution on how we can get our youth play more cricket. Thank you very much, Andrew Aurora. Andrew is the skipper of the Federal Government College Worry Old Students Association. Of course, they're in the cricket league, like I said earlier. Nigeria actually runs a functional cricket league. Thank you very much, Shemwa Jidagba. Thank you. Shemwa Jidagba is a cricket commentator. He's the go-to guy in media when it comes to cricket in Nigeria. That's all we can take on the show today. Join us on Saturday. Join us same time tomorrow, of course. But cricket we discussed extensively on Saturday on Plus Sports Special. Join us same time tomorrow, another edition. My name is Wally Scott. And like I always advise you at the end of every show, if not for anything, at least for your heart. Do some sports.